This video is going to be about kinetics. My kinetics videos will be split into three parts, so it's easier to navigate through the different sections if you're not confident with one, but confident with the other two parts. The first part of kinetics will be the basics of rates, getting rates from concentration time graphs and the initial rates method. Part two will be working out orders of reaction and an example of this. Reaction rate concentration graphs of orders, the shapes of them and how to recognize the shape of each one, and the overall order of a reaction. Part three will be the, about the rate constant k. How do we figure out the units of k in each situation, calculating the value of k, how k is affected by temperature, and the Arrhenius equation. Let's start with part one then. So part one is the basics of kinetics. As we may know, rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of reactant. Shortened to react there. If you don't know, these square brackets stand for concentration, which are given the units moles per dm cubed standard units for chemistry. So, why is rate proportional to the concentration reactants? Well, let's say we, we took a beaker, a big beaker, say a one litre beaker, and we only had sort of 50 mils of water in there, and let's say this reaction is going to take place in a solution of water. Now, if we added uh, one drop of one reactant, one drop of the other, and put it into there, simple collision theory states that a re particles have to hit each other in the correct orientation with the correct energy to actually react with each other. Now if we only have one drop of each reactant, it's going to take a while for those particles to actually move, find each other, collide with the correct energy, and um, react. However, if we added in, say, a, a big amount, 200 mils of each one, now suddenly we've got a lot of particles. A lot of them have uh, the correct energy, and it's really easy for the particles to find each other because there's, there's so many of them. So we, as we can see, its rate is proportional to the concentration reactant. The less uh, reactant we have, the, the smaller the concentration, less likely there is to be a reaction, therefore the, the rate is smaller. However, we suddenly have loads of reaction, uh, loads of reactant, the rate is going to be very, very quick. So that's why rate is proportional to reactant. Now, what we can do with this, simple mathematics that you may have learned at GCSE or a similar level if you're in a different country, as we can say, rate is equal to a constant times by the concentration of reactant. So we can replace the proportional to with an equals and a constant. So for example, if we found out the rate was uh, 4 moles per dm cubed per second, and the concentration of reactant was 1, well, we know 4 is proportional to 1, because they're both numbers, but some 4 doesn't equal 1, does it? So what we need to do is say 4 equals 4 times 1. So in this case, the rate constant k would be 4. So, as you may have heard me say, uh, k is the rate constant, which units you will work out individually for each reactant, uh, reaction. Uh, the concentration of reactants is uh, concentration which is moles per dm cubed, and the rate is moles per dm cubed per second. So, moles per dm cubed per second, and on one of my next slides you'll see why we have seconds to the minus one in a second. One thing I want to point out, now when you have a rate equation like this, rate equals k times the concentration of reactants, if the reactant, let's just randomly take hydrogen for example, and oxygen, now if they were in there, that means hydrogen and oxygen actually take place in the rate determining step of reaction, the slowest step of all the steps in reaction. Now let's look, out, look at how we actually get rate from say a graph. Now what we can do is we can measure the concentration reaction with respect to time. So at zero we know how much we put in, let's say it was like one mole per dm cubed, halfway through it's suddenly dropped down to 0.5 moles per dm cubed after say 100 seconds or something like that. And if it's a typical reaction we can actually work out the concentration using different methods and we can plot a graph like this. But we want to work out the rate. Now the rate is the concentration, the change in concentration, so the change in is represented by this uh, delta symbol here, so the change in concentration of the reactant 
over the change in time. Now that's where we get these units for, from for rate. So moles per dm cubed, which is concentration, over the change in time, which is seconds, which one over something, say x, is the same as to the minus one, so x to the minus one. So therefore the units are moles per dm cubed seconds to the minus one. So that's how we get those units. Okay, so how do we work out rate from this graph? Well, as it's the change in reaction over the change in time, what we can do if we want to know the rate at a selected point, which I've pre-selected here with this x, and we want to know the rate at that specific point. Now we can draw a tangent, which if you're mathematically minded is also known as the gradient of that point. Now the gradient or the tangent is known as dy by dx. And in this case, that is the uh, change in reactant over the change in time. So what we can do, if let's say this value here was 1, uh, 0.0 moles per dm cubed, and this value here was uh, 10 seconds. Now we've drawn this gradient and it intersects at 10, uh, it intersects at 1.0 and 10. So what we can do is, oh, okay, the reactant has changed by minus 1, so minus 1.0 and the time is increased by 10. So the change in time is 10, which means uh, dy by dx, which is the same as rate, is equal to minus 0 0.1 moles per dm cubed per second. Like I said, the units come from, you've got concentration divided by time, which is in seconds. So that would be our value there. And that's how we work out rate from a uh, concentration time graph. So now we can employ this in the initial rates method. So initial rates method is used when the reaction is say too quick uh, as it happens over a few milliseconds and you wouldn't be able to measure it unless you had some fancy lasers and things like that. Or if the reaction is really really slow, so let's say the reaction took 10 days to take place, you don't want to come back over a 10 day experiment and keep measuring the different concentrations at different times. So what we can actually do is we know the concentration of the reactant that we put in at the start when time is zero seconds, which is brilliant. So we, we know that, and what we can do is we can vary it. So we could have uh, the first reaction has a concentration of, say, one mole, second reaction a concentration of two moles, third reaction three moles, so on and so forth. What we can do is we can take at time equals zero the point, we can do the tangent or the gradient at that particular point, and um, we can do rate equals the, the change in the concentration over the change in time. So we draw the tangent, do that. Let's again say this was one uh, mole per dm cubed and that was 10 seconds. Oh, so we know here the rate is uh, minus one over 10. So therefore the rate is minus 0.1 uh, moles per dm cubed per second. Units are very critical when you're talking about um, uh, kinetics. <clears throat> so what we can do, we can work out the rate at each concentration. So we get the rate at one, the rate at two, rate at three, and however more, many points you want to do. And what you can do then is plot it on an initial rate, which this is the initial rate that we've, we've worked out here, against the concentration of reactant, which you know when time is zero how much reactant you put in. So we worked out rate, we've got reactant, we can plot the points on the graph, and then we'll get a shape out of this. I've just drawn this one here, and this shows the order of the reaction. In this case, a straight line like this shows first order uh, with respect to that reactant. If you watch my next video about orders, you'll see all the different shapes of the graphs for all different orders, and uh, you'll, need to, you'll need to know them for typical exams, and also what orders actually are, and how to work them out from data given. That's it for this video, just introducing you to the basics of kinetics. Please watch part two and part three as uh, they talk about orders and, and the rate constant k in the Arrhenius equation. Uh, this is very helpful when you're talking about kinetics. Please share this with your friends at school or if, if you know anyone interested in chemistry, uh, please like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.